through Ramana Maharishi's Ulladu Narpadu, that is, that which is in verses 40, which was given by Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi, we saw the first verse in Tamil, in Tamil, the first verse, let me recite the Tamil verse. Namulaham kandalal nanavam shakti ula Urmudalai oppal urutalai Namauru chittiramum parpanum serpadamum aruliyum Attanayum tana mavan <coughs> See He was a great sage He started the first verse on a very broad platform making everyone to know the fact that everything the moment <coughs> I say the word world or everything what it means that which has come for our sensory perception that everything including the person the individuals who has come who has come to the waking state of mind that is consciousness he sees them through his senses he perceives the world Bhagavan in the first verse emphatically he declares that everything is him. Just to communicate we are, we are using masculine gender as him. It doesn't have, it doesn't fall under any gender at all. Neither masculine nor feminine. It is beyond genders. It is beyond numbers. That is the basic fact. Bhagavan, Ramana Maharishi, he has first said that he alone is. Don't ever mistake this waking state has something only through your intelligence you are perceiving it you are seeing it you are realizing it as a for your sensory perception for your mind <coughs> you are perceiving it it is not the case including you the very seer in you. The very intellect which goes out in the individual to experience, to transact, to seek, to attain, what not. You put all the verbs behind the actions. Any verb, any verbal, any action any Kriya, whatever is being done or attempted to, including the person, one who has arisen to the waking consciousness, one who has come to the waking state, including him, is everything is resting in that one supreme power. That is what, that was the very broadest platform on which the very first verse starts. Now, in the second verse, let me read the verse as it comes in Tamil. Here, the second verse goes like this. 
மும்முதலை எம்மதமும் முற்கொள்ளும் ஓர் முதலே மும்முதலாய் நிற்கும் என்று மும்முதலும் மும்முதலே என்னல் அகங்காரம் இருக்கும் மட்டே யான் கெட்டு தன்னிலையில் நிற்றல் தலை ஹியர் ஜென்ரலி ஹீ கம்ஸ் டு த பர்டிகுலர் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ வாட் எவ்ரி ரிலிஜியன் சேஸ் ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி ரிலிஜியன் ஹவு தே அட்டம் ஹவு தே பர்சீவ் த ரியாலிட்டி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் the perceiver as a separate individual and he is taking lessons from this cosmos that is the world that is the second entity the world the first is the individual in sanskrit they call jiva then the jagat the cosmos the world that which he perceives through his senses and he undergoes all sorts of experiences and the thirdly all the religions they teach what is the precept they they teach they say there is something beyond all these there is a transcendent state this is what all the religions they proclaim the individual the cosmos and the transcendence that is the higher abode this is what they say this is what he starts the in the in, the, in this verse particular verse he first acknowledges this fact mummudal the three core foundations the basic platform that is the individual and the cosmos the jagat and the transcendent state this is being accepted by all the religions <clears throat> e now brings in the particular part of what you have to do what one person has to do what he has to see in this who actually perceives he comes to the the practical aspect of the practice it is a methodless method because the mind has been trained only to live in method and attain to certain things suppose we want to go to a place particular place from one place to another place we immediately jot down what are all the subsequent stations which we are going to cross to reach that particular destination that is a route map but here he now takes us he lifts us immediately to the practical aspect of the practice that is sadhana the sadhakam that what we have to do for whom is all these three aspects who actually perceives he now takes us beyond all religious methods he takes us to such a level that you are a particular species you belong to a particular species don't even call yourself brand yourself as a human being you belong to the human community you are one in the humanity don't even have that identification you take yourself as totally who am i from the second verse onwards slowly he is going to pictureize us what is this individual one browser one entity which browses as i me mine all this business what is it actually any practice for me to attend to any state 
this particular practice, especially knowing myself, it is not a destination to arrive at. It is not a locational place, geographical domain. For this, immediately in the second verse, he says the very basic step. And this is going to be the ultimate step which is going to be practiced. By and by, we are going to completely probe the software called the self. Self or mind or investigating the mind or self-inquiry or realizing one, one, oneself or who am I? The question, the very question, the foundation question, all means the same thing. Here, in the third line, Ennal ahankaram irukkummatte yankittu Who actually wakes up to all these three kinds of things? Who has woken up to this? In deep sleep, there are no differences at all because the differences which exist and thrive through the mind that becomes extinct in deep sleep. Who has arisen? What is this the individual being? Who perceives? Who perceives himself as this I am calling his body as I am so and so identifying with his professions with so many things <coughs> which the mind has brought throughout from millennia. All these identifications, to whom they exist, when do they come, for whom all these things exist. This was the fund, very fundamental question Bhagavan asked in this second verse. The ego, he starts from the second verse onwards, he is very microscopically dissecting and following how the ego arises, how ego exists and what we have to do with that. What is actually this ego? This is the investigative part. This starts from the second verse. First, year, first in the very first verse, there was a very broad platform was set that everything is that one. Still, I don't feel when I even when I do my religious practices, when I visit a temple, there is still the deity is there. And I am here in the sanctum sanctum in front of the deity, the God, the so called the one being, the whatever the thought which describes him within me, still it is actually there is a distance between me or the I and that the thought which describes about that godliness. Still that separation exists. A temporary consolation only I get when I do my religious practice. When I visit a temple, inside the inner sanctum, sanctum sanctum, I stand before the deity, my, my eyes gets automatically closed. What happens? What am I seeing? Standing in front of the deity, what am I seeing? Closing my eyes within myself. What is this tendency of closing the eyes? Who goes where? What is the search that takes place in those moments? Here the science begins. The science of the self. The very foundation of the investigation. That is why Bhagavan here 
ask the first question who perceives all these things and where does he go in the deep sleep where does he go for whom are all these the individual the world cosmos and the transcendence which is it to take place really to attain that state for whom is all these things and where does he go in his deep sleep and where all these things also go along with his mind and go to some oblivious zone this is the very very fundamental question with which the self knowledge begins so we have to practically see here what happens when we get up what is this waking entity who is this waking entity who wakes up who wakes up to himself to his registrations to his past experiences to his contacts with this world through his sensory organs who experiences this worldly living what are emotions what is this audio medium called thinking the thought what is our life actually what is living thinking expressing itself through various emotions through various past memories through various future projected projections made aspiring to fulfill itself in the future how do different time zones raise the present always trying to project itself as future hopes in the future working towards attaining fulfilling getting succeeding satisfying gratifying whatever 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 you call it and how do these things happen in us what is the what is the process everything is thought everything is in the form of audio video and how do they rise how do they come up to this moment the memory continuously working in the background as i mine me with me by me for me in me mine with all case endings and what is that entity which tries to become continuously one or the other thing be it a spiritual endeavor be it trying about ascetic methods trying to transcend the very mind or involving ourselves with worldly activities what is that entity when does it arise bhagavan here the third and fourth line he clearly like a definition for whom or all these things this is the question he puts there is a question mark with that all these things exist because 
the ego exists. The one who raises from the deep sleep for him alone are all these differences. And where are these differences actually exist? The world never comes and it, it doesn't do anything at all. The individual's relationship with the world only is making all the thoughts to run within him, go within him, move within him, pull him, push him, gratif gratifies him. That's one or the other thing. He only wakes up to the world. His, his thoughts wake up to the world. His transactions wake up to the world. The audio video mechanisms mechanism wake up to the world. It wakes up to the world. When the ego wakes up, the whole cosmos, the whole cosmos arises with the ego. In fact, the ego is the world. The ego is seeking transcendence. The ego is actually involving itself in the worldly activities too. Everything is ego. Be it spiritual aspiration or worldly involvement. Who wakes up? For whom is the thought? A thought carries a past experience. It's a combination of both feeling in the form of a video as well as audio. For whom is it? Can your thought be there without a thinker thinking that thought? Then what is your thought? The thought happens by itself. Who thought about it? Whose thought is it? This is what Bhagavan here as a question. He places that question. Mumudale Yenal Ahankaram Irukumate. The moment a thought raises, the moment thought arises, it's about the world or about this entity which is included in the world. So everything is, whether you call it world or my mind or this mind, both are same. In fact, the complete cosmos comes out from the mind only, the individual mind only. That's why, if you travel along with me in this investigation, it is revealed instantaneously or if your background influence is working within you, you are simply postponing it, that's all. Either you are realizing it immediately, what is a thought, or you, you don't realize it. Either you know it immediately, instantly, you see through the fact, you live through the thought, you realize the thought, how can this thought can exist, how can this thought exist? Without myself, as a thinker, without the thinker, how your thought can arise?
So the very first, the very first part, Bhagavan's definition is, it's because of the ego, all these things exist. Whether you are search about the transcendent state, or this, the existence of this world, or the existence of you as a separate location called an individual with a time and space involved in it called thinking and being as a human here. Look at this. Fundamentally, there is no one here as a separate existence. There is no reality in it. We have been treading this path on the very foundational question that is who am I? This question becomes authentic the moment we realize thus this thinking, this conglomeration of all these thoughts which are all going in me with a lot of identifications the realization of it that they do not have a separate locational center to process anything here. There starts the real inquiry. Then who is this? That is why in this satsang, in the very beginning I told, I do not even grant myself that I belong to a human community, I belong to this humanity, I am a human being, there should not be any supports for this investigation. The very authenticity of existence of a separate locational intelligence, a thought process according to a human being, what, wow, how does, he, how does this intelligence manifest? What is his intelligence? Clever thinking, using the thoughts, getting involved with the thoughts. The intellect go, going on dichotomizing itself. Judging, rejecting, modifying, what not, all sorts of things, maneuverable, all maneuvers. What else? Then this, that's why just because we are, we are perceiving this body, this should not be taken for granted and this name should not never get in the way of our investigation of the reality that what is this species? which has come about. Who is this calling himself as I? Who is, who is calling himself as me, with me, for me, of me, in me, on me, and mine? These are all mine. Here only Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi is the very way of who am I inquiry, the very very first step of the who am I inquiry starts here. Leave alone all these names and forms in you. Thousands and thousands of identification during waking state. Just look at them. How can they exist in you? How can they have separate hold as yourself, as yours. How can they have that hold at that particular physical center or the psychological center called the ego or the intellect or the chitta or mind, whatever it may be. See, our day-to-day -day living 
functionally we need to know what are we for functions only i am defined as a father to my children i am defined these are all roles they have only functional utility but we cannot get stuck in that level alone because they are not real if they are real they should exist even in deep sleep they should continue to exist they have only functional value nothing more than that we should not confuse ourselves for the real search with this functional aspects of our waking state the day to day living i may be working somewhere i may be a boss i may be a manager i may be a professional there may be different uh, social roles getting merged in me as a father as a son as a friend as a husband as a brother so many aspects of it we are going be beyond all these things we are questioning a separate psychological entity as i and me and mine that come and go during our everyday waking state if ego is not there is nothing then what is the state that is the first step of the who am i inquiry who is who, who what is he then what is that space if a thought doesn't arise that means if there is no thinker at all from any angle from any aspect of role a particular role what does meditation actually do where does it take what is meditation very very deeply very very minutely looking at the thoughts moving in within us realizing the fact when your thought has moved past where they not the thinker also was there without a thinker who was thinking in me my previous thought thought has left the moment i said my previous thought now i am in non thinking mode no thought mode who was then the thought whose thought was it so thought itself was the thinker if i am talking if i am communicating communicating this the inner self movements very minutely i am the speaker i am the speech i am the expressed i am the description the speaker and the description how can they be different we 
without a thinker, whose thought was it? This is the first step of inquiry towards finding out ego. We are slowly getting into the psychology, very deeply watching it. If I am undergoing a past memory within me, some days or some months before I experienced something that has come to my mind or consciousness now, the experiencer and the experience both can only be the same. They are not even both. Who is recalling? Whose past experience was it? The experiencer is the experience. If we are able to understand this one point very introspectively, very closely, we can easily understand then our whole waking state is nothing but replay, rewinding, replaying of the past millennia. We can realize this fact instantly. If I am behaving mechanically, my next minute in some action or in some thinking, All the oncoming moments of me, if, uh, if everything I am acting as if I am different and my actions are from me and I am not the actions, if this kind of, with this understanding, if I go, I have not understood it. You get this? Sir, this is a science, beautiful science. There, are, there is no other way to kill the mind or to satiate the mind, pacify the mind. We have to realize the fact. Normally, what we think, observer is different, observed is different. Seer is different. Scene is different. Thinker is handling his thoughts like that. We are, we have trained ourselves because we have never probed into this. Thinker is different from the thoughts. Observer is different from the observations. Seer is different from the scenes or the sights. Do they so? Are they so? That is what Bhagavan questions. How can all these three aspects called an individual, the Jagat and the transcendent state or godliness, whatever we call it, how can these three things, first of all, can arise? How can they come into play in your mind? Because it is your projection, your conception. The conceiver and the conception both are same. This is nothing but a confusion. Taking my thoughts are different from me as a thinker is the delusion. A 
a child is born and both the parents were take take this fact this is an ex, this is an example there is a child it's a orphan child there must have been a mother no who has given birth to, birth to the child a mother must have been there to give delivery to the child no give birth to the child no so there must be a thinker without him how your thought can pop go so what are all these differences in our waking state even to look at these movements of thought you the thoughts should be quiet and they should be quiet there must be some space and silence to look closely pass a thread in the needle needle sai how much attention is needed the same space the same silence that is no other movement in our mind there are no background influences as memory working constantly behind us this is a very close scrutiny this is what bhagavan says if this scrutiny is pursued for whom is for whom is all these religious practices and all this world the individuals and the transcendental state all the worldly activities or spiritual activity or all the so many thousands crores and crores of differences which has been <coughs> carried over throughout the millennia for whom all these things are this particular days my waking awareness or waking consciousness or the wakeful mind with thousands and thousands of differences and past influences and everything this all this working not knowing where am i going what am i thinking who is the thinker and what are these thoughts why am i pursuing these thoughts why am i acting in this world why am i being pushed by all these thoughts influences the center is non understanding the center in each one of us which works which pursues all this worldly activities or even spirituality or even knowing about our own self is that the motivated predetermined prefixed preordained experiences as thinkers the complete past is ruling as different experiences one or the other experiences with its fixed conclusions this is what is called as a close to mind this doesn't lead us anywhere the confusion will prevail forever
we are breeding ego by default out of non understanding out of confusions out of carrying the past millennia of registrations if we see this fact even for a millisecond a nanosecond we will realize the fact how can there be a thought without a thinker it is a thinker's thought thinker is already an experience which is coming and meeting this moment this present moment in my mind it is trying to influence this moment sir my reaction it is coming out of the set methods the set experiences which i underwent those conclusions are going to influence my next moment of life that means past is going to express itself nothing else you are not going to meet the new with the new at all because you are not open you are clouded by your experiences and those experiences are coming in revolutions in the present moment and they are guiding you and always there is a thought is different and thinker is someone who is in control of the body and who is ruling all other thoughts this is the greatest misunderstanding this is the greatest of the confusions this confusion should go forth with this is what bhagavan in the fourth line this can exist all these differences as individual the cosmos and the transcendence or the godly states everything has a platform only in the ego when the ego comes when the ego arises every all the differences arise when there is no ego then who is then is the entity that is what we are going to see that is what bhagavan in the fourth line also says that is the highest state if the ego is not then you are that without a word without a separate self existence even within the body though you are in the body you are not of the body though you are in the world you are not of the world you don't carry the world because world is always extinct because everything is only that that was the first verse slowly is going to take a step by step concretely we are going to see what is this ego what is the this actually it is a abbreviation ego is a word is an abbreviation what is this abbreviation e edging g guard o out edging guard out that is always pushing the, the very thinking process takes us away from our real nature that is godliness thinking process see ego is created out of the flow see at a given moment also you just check up this constantly you experiment this how an entity see whoever talks within us whoever constantly chatters within us that is the like the like the browser cursor that is the cursor like movement in the computer what is that entity entity at a moment we we will be in an envelope of about 50 to 100 thoughts on a particular pattern on a particular project on a particular past experience repeating itself thinking about it 
trying to do modifying it, doing one or the other thing about it, feeling about it, or how to how to avoid or how to get one or the other aspects will be going on because in in either of these things only that center comes. How does the center arise? Either by pushing or asking for it. Either by holding, clinging or rejecting. Either by seeking or avoiding. So in a particular moment, when you are in the deep involved state of thinking what happens, in, in the flow itself, from the flow, one will, one, one see, the same thought, thought about by a thinker, raises as a thinker and alienates himself with the body that he is ruling the other thoughts, he will say, okay, okay, we will soon get it, we will soon succeed. In the next attempt, we will not lose it. We will see that somehow we, we win. This becomes the thinker. And this experience is clearly registered with methods. The methods may be how to avoid a future undesirable event or how to get a desired thing. How to make a particular event to happen either for or against. A method is constantly set by the experiencer, thinker, doer, seer, one who aspires, one who avoids, one who does not want, one who want. So everything raises, the moment the individual center in the psychology arises. This is what Bhagavan says. So look at that. If that is not, there is nothing. That is the abode. That is the declaration. That is the definition. The third is the definition. Everything comes out of the ego. Because of ego only all these differences, be it the individual or the humanity or the world or the divinity, godliness, transcendent, all, all these everything spoken about comes with the individual arising, the individual consciousness as a separate entity, a doer, a seer, a thinker, a person who desires, a person who desires not, a person who craves, clings, anything, avoids. In the deep sleep, where was it? No one knows whether he was a man or a woman, child, old man, sick, born, unborn, what was that kind of state? When the mind is extinct, there is nothing, no creation, nothing whatsoever. Then as a mind, when I say mind as this body, this name, this form, in the waking state, when it enters, the whole world is created by this. That is why in this third line, Bhagavan categorically, he questions, if the ego is not, do all these things exist? So they have no place at all. So with the ego, everything arises. That's why Bhagavan says, look at that. If the ego is not, nothing is. When the ego is there, there is everything. 
be in the state where ego is not, where the center is not, where a separate thinker is not, separate doer is not, separate seeker is not, separate seer is not. No e or business is there. With verb with e or extension, that that aspect is not there. Then that is your abode. That is your real nature. It can't be defined because every definition there is a definer is there. Definer is an illusion. The categorization has a description and the descriptor. A person who describes is an illusion. It's a constant flow which has been objectifying itself. We cannot ask why. Why should it be objectified? Who is there? The answer is only silence. The abode is immense silence, limitless space, infinity. That is our real nature. This is our abode. This is what Bhagavan in the second verse says. I will give all the verse meanings in English with the Tamil song also. Everything I will give it along with this video. Under the video, whether in YouTube or in Maitreya.com, you can see in both the places. Wherever explanations can be given, I will write it also. S see the video along with that. The description which is given beneath it. Follow the satsangs. The oncoming satsangs, the subsequent satsangs will be very closely, very minutely, will be probing what is this called, uh, what is this species, what is this mind, whose self is this, why does it arise, why does it live, what is living, and where does it go in deep sleep. And where does it go when the body falls off? All these things minutely we will see. The understanding will automatically sit in the muscles. Closely follow the satsangs. Thank you.